How was Coachella? Good. Like, I'm, I'm rolling. So if you guys want to talk into the mics, yeah, we're like we just kind of roll. That's the kind of casual okay. nature of the podcast. Um, Coachella was great. We um, that was kind of our anchor date to start the whole live performance of Dream Car. So we did four or five club shows leading up to that point. A couple days at the Roxy, I saw. A couple nights at the Roxy, a couple nights at this place called the Constellation Room in Orange County. Oh, cool. And um, tiny, tiny place. And so really intimate places. And it was great for, you know, especially for Adrian, Tom, and myself to get back on the small stages again because it's been a long time. Yeah. And um, it was really fun. Like a great way to start off the, the Dream Car live experience. Were there any nerves going into those small rooms? Absolutely. Or? Part of it was playing at home that's always kind of nerve-wracking on so many levels whether it's in front of 350 or 20,000 and and uh and also you know we've been working on this music for a good couple of years and, and uh we hadn't played live yet yeah and you know so we weren't road testing you, the material you can't recreate we weren't, in a jam space you just can't yeah. you know we can we we rehearsed really well and we 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 knew our parts but it's just not the same thing as getting up there and doing it and being in the moment. Yeah. And also, I feel like with the bigger shows, you have to have to emote to the people in the last row. But also, you have a lot of lights and things and like video screens. But when it's a small club, it's like it's sort of just you guys. It's like it's like there's there's not as much production to it's help. It's stripped I, down. Yeah. It's just the music and us on stage. And you know, you you realize it when you in the, uh, the place I mentioned before, the Constellation Room. It's so tiny. Like there's. People, you know, people can touch you. That's how small the stage is. And if you walk one foot to the left or the right, the wrong way, you can knock your band and bandmate off the stage. It's that small, and um, it was it was a it was an experience that we really haven't had for such a long time. And uh, it was it was awesome. It was awesome. Like there's, you just realize there's something so beautiful about small places, intimate venues where the, all the energy is contained. Versus, you know, as, as is those big shows. You know, there's something beautiful about both. Um, I mean, getting to Dream Car. Uh, I guess I, I we just kind of want to know. I guess to start, how did you guys and Davy come together? What's the story there? So Davy, um, we've known Davy for years. Um, our bands uh, have played either either we've met at shows or we've played similar shows. And did you ever and tour together? We never toured together. And the only time um, we actually ever played together on the same stage, I believe, is in 2012, mm -hmm. when Block Audio played with No Doubt at one of our shows in, in Los Angeles at the Universal Amphitheater. And um, we've always, you know, we've always been fans of Davey. He's such an incredible front person, and uh, he's very magnetic. And um, we, uh, when, when Tom, Adrian, and I had been discussing, like, let's continue to play music, we love playing together. And we've been playing together for almost 30 years now. And... Um, we wanted to keep going and be creative. Uh, Davey was the person that popped into our minds. So when he said yes, it was just like, it, you know, it was just, it was, it was a perfect storm of goodness, you know, that, that came together. Well, that's an interesting thing as far as process. So it's like when you three decide, you know, we want to keep creating together, we want to make music. Do you have a short list of, of singers you want to have in? Do you think about maybe jumping up front and singing? Like, what's that conversation? Oh, you like? wouldn't want to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sing. No, no. There are no microphones in front of myself, Tom, or Tony <laughs> right. on stage. <laughs> For a reason. Uh, there really isn't a short list in when we talked about, you know, uh, well, to back up, like, we we make music, you know, often, you know, whether it's, you know, trying to get on a soundtrack or just, you know, just still playing together. And, um, but then when the idea came of, like, maybe let's let's see if we can do, like, another band, there wasn't a short list. It was Davey. That was the only name we had discussed. Right. So you just you knew you were going to do something where you wanted to maybe get on the road again, play live again, as opposed to just creating for yourselves or for soundtracks, like you said. It was about creating. It really was. It was about creating new music and putting stuff out there. And whatever happened with it, if we ended up playing live, that would be additional like icing on the cake. But it was about creating. You know, we talked to a lot of bands that have, you know, have had extremely successful careers and you get to the top and I'm always interested in their sort of relationship with their past work. You know, do you find that it informs the new work? Do you find it almost like a burden to live up to? How do you sort of like navigate that in your own mind? I guess I would say when you're creating new stuff. That's a good question. I mean, I think that, that we didn't really put too many parameters on this. Um, cause like Tony said, this is, you know, a space to just be creative. There was no management. There was no record company. It was just four people coming up with ideas. Um, and it wasn't, we didn't have any conscious 
thought or discussion of what kind of sound or what kind of band this could become. But however, I think we were individually all conscious of let's make sure this doesn't sound like hey, a fire, no doubt. Yeah. Um, but other than that, we, we were just kind of going for it and whatever came naturally, we, we, we gravitated towards. The one thing I think that we don't take for granted is, is the fact that we have these histories between Davey's history and our history and that provided this platform for people to be interested in what we might be doing, you know, and we don't take that for granted. Like it gave us, it opened the door for people to, you know, uh, want to maybe be curious about our new music. And so that was a nice place to start from. And I think the fact that, as Adrian mentioned, that, that these bands are, our band is, is different from our previous projects. That's important. You know what I mean? It's, it's like about doing something new. And I think we were able to accomplish that with Dream Car. Mm. It was interesting. We were talking to Kings Leon and we were talking about some of their past records and, you know, the really successful sort of songs that they'd had. And the question was sort of, you know, in the moment, did they know that those songs would be successful? And when they look back, did they sort of uh, go, oh, yeah, it's awesome? You know, and, and their answer was kind of like, well, some of them, we were kind of like, shit, we didn't think anything of it. And then it becomes, you know, this monster song. And then they go, okay, I, I guess. D- did you guys know sort of along the way with some of these monster hits that, that's exactly what they were or did it almost take sort of people catching on to, to frame them that way? You never really know. And, <laughs> and to back up to um, our tragic kingdom record, I yeah. mean, we just wanted to put it out. We'd worked on it for so long and you know, we, it, it was, we just wanted to be able to go and do a real tour. You know, I think one of us, maybe it was me said, you know, if we sell a hundred thousand records, this that'll be awesome for that band, and you know. Where do you at now? What's the count? <laughs> I lost count. But, <laughs> but um, yeah. So I don't think any of us thought, yeah, this one song was going to be a huge hit. It, it it's it's hard to predict that. And obviously, once there's success, there's more pressure to come. You know, with uh, outside forces saying, well, do, do we have hits or do we not have sure. hits? And you know. We we could all we could do is just come up with songs that we think sound and feel cool. But back to Dream Car, that was the beauty of of uh, making this record, or at least uh, the writing process. There there was no outside forces of saying, "I don't hear any hits." You know, it's just pure organic creativity. Sure, yeah. yep. Tony, I like what you were saying about how your histories and no doubt in AFI have provided this platform. I always find that interesting when you think about here, you hear some artists who almost resent the, that they have this hit that they have to live up to. And there's other people that are maybe a little more serene about it. Kind of in the tone that you use are like, no, this is just, this is all a bit of a luxury and a privilege that we have. Is that kind of a common theme within the band or do people struggle with it to various degrees of like living up to things that happened in the past or just the, no. your general state of Zen, I guess. I, I, I don't, I think it's a general feeling that we all share. And for Davey, he's, doing AFI like he he parts with us this weekend and he's off to do an AFI tour you know so he's doing both right now um but I I think if there's one thing that the history for Tom Adrian and myself the one thing that the history of No Doubt has afforded us is the luxury to go and explore and do this stuff like we're so fortunate to be able to go do things for just to create new music you know what I mean and that's a nice place to be because um it can be really free spirited and really, you know, as Adrian said, organic from the get go. It's a good space to create, and a lot of musicians aren't afforded that sort of uh, play area. That's right. Um, dynamic between band members is always interesting. I, what's it been like with you guys and Davey? Do you find because you three have such a sort of like a working relationship, does it ever become three on one? Do you know how, what's the dynamic like between the four of you? Well, it's it's you know super democratic. At least it has been up until this point, and which is nice. You know, I feel like we're all adults, and we can have pretty honest conversations. And uh, you know, it's it's harder when you're you know twenty years old and you're trying to figure out how to be a democracy and and keep that going. And you know, there's a lot of growing up that needs to happen when you when you get in that situation when you're young. And uh, so we're having a good time. Um, you know, these songs, I think we're all so proud of this music and the process and the level of respect that we've engaged in on the creative side of it. That's kind of led the charge in my mind. You know, there's not 
We're not looking over each other's shoulders saying, Hey, you know, you should play like this or you should sing like that. It's, it's been, it's been really respectful and um, it's nice to be in that environment. Well, speaking of sort of the, the music of dream car, you know, I feel like there's always been hints of obviously eighties new wave in no doubt. Um, is this like a muscle you've been sort of like using, like yearning to use more? Uh, and was, you know, this a direction that you'd be pushing with or without sort of doing a, a, another No Doubt record? Is this sort of that kind of style of music? Is that just sort of what you wanted to create or is it what came out naturally? I think it's part of our growing up. I think it's the, it's part of the fabric of who we are um, because all those bands were so influential on us. There was never a conversation about being that band. I think it just kind of came out naturally and maybe the chemistry between the three of us and Davey brought that out. Um, because we have similar points of reference in the music that we all love. So I think it was, it was almost inevitable that it was going to go in that direction, but there was never a conversation about, Let, let's try this or let's do this. It was just being in that moment and being artistic and being creative and just like letting ourselves just have fun with the music and seeing where it went. And if something appealed to us, like you had a keyboard part and you're like, oh, that feels so comforting and so, you know, I feel like I'm going home, then we just, we pursued it. We didn't have any reason to inhibit ourselves you worked with the neon trees fella on the, or is that coming up I no we worked with a gentleman named tim, tim. pagnotta yeah. who produced neon trees mm -hmm. and um, some other bands his, yeah how was that he was great yeah he's so knowledgeable what's his specialty if he's got you few. know what i would say all of it he gets so deep into it i mean his his uh commitment to sonically you know, the approach to the songs, to the songwriting, to, to all of it. He goes really, really deep as a producer. He's so good at his craft. And uh, he was definitely the right guy for, for, the, for, the, for this band. You see some, like, iconic musicians like Jack White continue to create, like, on a very sort of intense level. And uh, others are sort of more deliberate. Maybe they're not super compelled to create. Where do you guys fall, fall on that spectrum? Do you, do you find that you're super prolific with creating, whether you put music out or not? Or do you kind of let it come to you? That's a Good question. Um, I, I think, you know, there was, there's was there been some time off from No Doubt for the three of us. There's been some time off from No Doubt, and each of us pursued different things creatively. Um, but this is really the first time the three of us have kind of come together and done something um, this kind of specific. And, I mean, we've invested three years of our life into this project so far. And um, so... I don't know if I answered your question. Who's the busybody of the band, and who, who's just like, <laughs> let me know when the gig is? Like, or does everybody sort of work on a similar? No, no, work, it's a very there's work ethic level. No, it's, or... it's it's a very similar work work ethic. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, obviously, Davey's really busy between AFI and AFI touring and Dream Car touring, and he's working on Black Audio, and he's got lots of stuff going he on. He sounds like a real busybody. He's a busy, oh, yeah. busy guy. <laughs> yeah, um, but I think all of us are are, are pretty. Uh, no, it's it's interesting. I think with all of us. For Adrian, Tom, and myself, we all have kids too. So, you know, we have that part of our lives as well. Um, but when we're in the dream car moment, everyone's 100% committed. It feels like that way. You know, like everyone's like, let's do this. Let's make this happen. We have this limited amount of time to make these great things happen. Let's go for it. I, I'm sort of fascinated by the idea of like when you guys decide to go and do a project like this, you know, it's going to be very public. You guys are going to be touring it. Is that a conversation that you have with Gwen where you're like, hey, we're going to go do this? And how does that conversation go and sort of where does she fall on the spectrum of like, cool, do your thing or... Well, and vice versa when she wants to go do the voice or whatever. Like, Yeah, I mean, we let her know. And, um, you know, I, she's so busy. I mean, she's, like you said, she's on The Voice, did a solo record, did a solo tour. And uh, she has kids as well. And a new boyfriend in the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, yeah. I mean, here's here's the thing. This is what this is what we do best. Each one of us, individually and sometimes collectively, we we play music. I can't do anything else, <laughs> and so I'm gonna do this. And you know, when no doubt's not working, I'm still gonna be playing drums. And at the moment, I'm stoked to be playing with my friends, and uh, you know, touring a record that I'm super proud of. Um, I don't think a lot of people get that second chance to, you know, actually put out a record and do a full band thing across the U.S. You know, it's a uh, it's a nice place to be. Yeah, you mentioned you, you know you're both parents. Do you find that you miss the road and sort of that life? It's such a unique career. Or do you, you know, if it never happened again, would you be like, I'm cool, I'm hanging with my kids? Or do you start to get that itch? So I for me, uh, I f I think it's about finding a balance. 
And, you know, we've just been out here on the East Coast for a couple of weeks now. But what happened is last Friday night we played New York City. Saturday morning we flew to Los Angeles and played the K-Rock Weenie Roast. Oh, yeah. And then Sunday we flew back to Philadelphia. And I was, you know, we'd already been gone for a week and I was missing my kids. And I got to see them and connect with them for like, you know, less than 24 hours. But for a few hours at the show and then had breakfast with them before I flew back out. That was important to me. That was really great, you know, and I'm going to see him again on Sunday. So I think it's about finding that balance for me personally. Like, it's like, I don't want to be away for too long. I was talking to Kurt Smith from Tears for Fears, and he said prior to this tour that they're about to embark on, they haven't been away for more than two weeks at a time. I've heard well, that. That's the he's, magic number. He's never been away from, from his kids for more than two weeks, and I think his kid's going to college now. So he's wow. been doing this consistently, obviously, for many, many years. And I thought that was like a golden rule to apply to ourselves, you know, and... Why not? When you can, if you can, if you can make that happen, let's do it. Set the terms. Yeah, I've heard that from uh, friends of mine who have kids that are in bands. Like, try to keep to the two two week rule. So, what, you go off for two rule. weeks, yeah. come back for a week, or like whatever. Yeah, it is. no, like no more than two weeks. Yeah, yeah, that's fascinating. It's always interesting whenever you talk about super bands, and you know, there's a path for bands like this to like obviously work with something like Audio Slave or Velvet Revolver, where you sort of take a singer from one prominent band, you know, another prominent band. How much thought have you put into sort of where this cycle might take you guys? Do you guys think about that stuff, like from a the cycle? You played Weenie Roast, the, you know that you're clearly that's the it's a K Rock big festival. Like, well, I mean, the, we're 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 de- I mean, the record, going for it. You're here with us. Yeah, yeah. like what's, yeah. The, what's the record, the record <laughs> what's came the out ambition? Yeah. two weeks ago, so we're 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 grinding. Yeah, you know, I mean, we we've, we've heard the the super blah 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 term kind of thrown out, but which is flattering, but we're we're. We're slugging it out. We're out here grinding. We're playing small clubs. We're introducing a brand new band, and uh, and we're gonna keep doing it. You know, probably for the rest of the year, and see what 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 that uh, where this band ends up after you know people get to hear the record and live with it for a while. And it, I hope that the cycle takes us into 2018 and we can do a proper tour. But um, yeah, I mean it's 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 humbling in the greatest ways possible. We're playing small clubs. We're talking to you guys. We're talking to other people, and we're 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 showing something we're really proud of. What's the set list look like? Is it it's all the dream? entire record front to back, cool. <laughs> plus a couple covers? What covers? Are you allowed to tell us? Um, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, totally. We've been doing them. We're doing uh, oh, yeah. don't, don't change by In Excess. Oh, nice. We're doing Moon Age Daydream by Bowie. Oh, uh, killer. And we also mix in uh, No More Mr. Nice Guy by Alice Cooper as well. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good choice. Yeah. yeah, you don't bust out any No Doubt or AFI no, tunes. No, 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 that no. would not make sense for this. Project. None of that business. No, that was, that's not what we're here for. It, you know, it, it wouldn't be respectful to Davies bandmates either. It's not respe- it, it just doesn't make sense. Sure. Um, I guess lastly, unless you have another question, I was going to ask about the contrast and difference uh, between songwriting with, you know, and obviously if Davey were here, we're going to ask like AFI as well, but the contrast in writing, I guess, with Dream Car and No Doubt, what's the difference, the main difference you guys have seen? Um, obviously, both Davey and Gwen bring different approaches to their lyrics. They're very different lyrics. Um, that's obvious by just reading them and, and listening to the songs. The one thing I will say is there's there's very many there's a lot of similarities that people might not expect. They're both incredible front people. They're both very dynamic performers and I will say like for me being on stage with Davey, it, it, the energy level hasn't felt that different to me. Like he's he's Same here. he's he's a really obviously very energetic front man and Gwen's a very energetic front woman and and they are both they I would just, to me, it's just like there's more similarities than than things that are different. It's a common spirit between. It's a common spirit. Yeah. That's a good way of explaining it. Yeah. Thanks so much for your time, guys. Thank, thank you. you guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank, you. Nice. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.